so uh, this, this, this session is extremely important. Uh, in order to, to do any sort of interaction, to even get to interaction, it's important to be able to visualize. And uh, so we have uh, three great speakers who will present their perspective on visualizations, vi visualization. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the OWL project, one of the biggest challenges we had is how do we visualize um, enough information that people can do meaningful interaction and that uh, uh, meaningful real-time interaction. So that was extremely complicated. So really happy. So the first, the first uh, presenter this afternoon is one person that I've, uh, I've always admired. And uh, Fernanda, Fernanda Villegas, and she's, she's an alum of, of the Media Lab. And she's done work. She has a website called manyeyes.com. So I'm advertising for you at the same time. <laughs> manyeyes.com. And what it is, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's a view, it's a window to facilitate uh, multiple, multi multiple people uh, manipulating data and, and getting better, um, better inferences out of that. So we're really happy to have uh, Fernanda here from IBM. Thank, Thank you. So thanks for having me. Um, as Dale said, um, there is this website called Many Eyes, and the idea there is it's a place where anyone can come to upload data, visualize these data sets, and then share it with the world and sort of try to do collective sense making. So I'm going to demo some of the things that we did on Many Eyes and sort of give you an idea of how people are coming together to try to understand data and you know when someone has a question can other people uh, answer if there's a problem in the data set how is that being resolved um, and hopefully give you a sense of some of the of the visualization techniques that we have over there the motivation for this work came out of us realizing that this kind of you know, very powerful technology is only available to the elite, to people who pay a lot of money for having interactive visualization tools. And so we wanted to sort of democratize this kind of technology and let anyone have access to interactive visualizations. So this is what Mini Eyes looks like. This is the home page. Um, as you can see, we have featured visualizations every day on the site. Right now we have something that deals with clash cash for clunkers and the healthcare bill and so forth. Um, and then let me show you what it looks like when you actually go to one of these visualizations. So as an example, I'm showing you here a time series of US government spending the budget basically since uh, from 1962 to 2004. Every visualization on many eyes is interactive. So if I mouse over this, I can see that within these big categories, such as human resources, I have a bunch of, uh, of subcategories within that. And I can see you know, how much was spent for each one of those over the years. Right now, I'm looking at them uh, in absolute numbers. I can look at them through percentages. This is also a much bigger data set than it looks like. So if I want to explore it further, I can start to just click on things here on this, on this tree structure that I have on the left. So if I look at things like physical resources, it changes to show just um, the items under physical resources. And then, you know, I might want to go to transportation, what does tra transportation look like, commerce. Um, what about national defense? National defense is always fun because it's sort of cyclical, even though I had you know, in my mind that it seems like it always grows, but it seems to be cyclical. Every visualization on many eyes also has a link, a direct link underneath it to its data set. So if I click on that link, I actually see the numbers behind that picture, right? And if I want to get the entire file of this thing, I can click on view as text and then you just get the raw data. And this is really important because when you're trying to get people to collectively make sense of data, you know, someone is going to have an idea to visualize it this way, another person might want to do some other calculation, and so the data really needs to be free. It needs to be very easily accessible, and, and so that was a big point on many eyes. Now, every visualization on many eyes is also an opportunity for a discussion. So underneath this visualization, you can see that people have been posting all sorts of comments. And next to a lot of these comments, there, there are images. So for instance, if I go over here and this person said, 
the amplitude here is huge, dwarfs everything else. What exactly are they talking about? So I can click on that image and the visualization reloads to show me exactly what it is that they are referring to. And this is really important with, big, you know, with huge data sets because you can interact with this visualization in so many different ways that I will never know what valley or peak or, that you're talking about. So this happens to be a huge peak in deposit insurance in the early 1990s. Any guesses of what this might be? It's the savings and loans scandal, right? So this person asked, what is this? And right away, someone else answered, oh, it's the SNL scandal, right? So this is really the idea of putting it out there, having people uh, analyze this data together collectively, and, and sort of you know, hypothesizing, asking questions, and so forth. Um, let me give you a more recent example. So this is a visualization about the stimulus bill huge stimulus bill. How are we, how, how is the government allocating this money, right? So this is what we call a tree map. <laughs> it's a visualization that um, creates sections within this big rectangle. And the size of each section is the amount of money that has been allocated to each one of these programs. So for, in, for instance, here in tax cuts, that's the biggest rectangle. And within tax cuts, you can see that it that there are different partitions there. Same thing, you know, aid to workers, aid to states. Let's look at science and technology. That's always fun. So if I want to view, if I want to zoom in there, I just zoom into science and technology and I see how the money has been divided up within that section. Let me go back to the whole thing. Um, let's look at education. So you get a sense of how I'm playing with this and navigating this uh, visualization to look at different parts. Now, the interesting thing about this is that this was created by a journalism outpost. This was done by ProPublica, which is an independent um, uh, journalism place. Well, I thought I had it here, but maybe, let me see. Uh, let me see if I have here, yeah. So one of the things on many eyes is that every visualization that you create, you can also export. You can export it live, you can embed it, sort of like you would do a YouTube video. Hello. <laughs> so, So ProPublica did this. Yes. Uh, <laughs> created this visualization and embedded the visualization on their own site. So this is the ProPublica site. And, and you know they went to many eyes, created the visualization, and put it back there. Because the idea is really for you to use these widgets. And wherever you think that you might have a meaningful conversation about these facts and numbers, that's where you want to have that visualization live and working. Um, so to give you a different kind of example of how people are using these visualization techniques, let's talk about something much less heavy than the stimulus bill. This is the same kind of visualization, but it's about a wedding. Someone created a whole data set about all the wedding guests and whether they were coming or not, where they were coming from, who was inviting them. So this is a tree map. So these are all the, the reddish and orange are all the people who are coming to the wedding for sure. The greens are people who are not coming for sure. And then I can play with this. I can change the way I'm looking at these people. So what if I drag main category to the top? Now I can see the bride friends, the groom's family, the bride's family, the parents' friends, and so forth. Um, we can also see, you know, where are these people coming from? So a lot of them, so it's an international wedding, right? A lot of people come from the US, a lot of people coming from the UK, and so forth. Um, and then there's this one which I love, it's age. There's young and old people. I wonder what is the threshold for, you know, where you <laughs> fall in the category. But the point here, the reason why I'm showing you this is because um, visualization is really a medium. And it's, it's something that traditionally has been thought of as just you know, for um, 
information analysis, uh, data analysis, and only something that scientists and really serious people should touch. And the idea with many eyes is that it's not, it, it's, it's a medium. Anyone can touch this. Anyone can bring any sort of data that they want to make sense of. So a lot of people have started uploading personal data on many eyes and creating sort of these mirrors of themselves, these portraits of their lives. Um, and, and that's one of the things that I think is really important when we try to, you know, go to, to the scale of let's try to make sense of network data, let's try to, to collectly, collectively understand the environment around us. If you can use this kind of technology to make sense of your own life, then you can use to make sense of the entire environment, right? So, some, so these kinds of, of tools allow you to sort of travel this range of different kinds of information you're interested in. Then we go to visualizing text. A lot of people on many eyes are interested in visualizing not only numbers, but text. And this is a visualization of Alberto Gonzalez's um, testimony before Congress, okay? <laughs> and that's exactly the reaction I always get, which is great, right? I don't even have to explain what this visualization is doing, people get it, right? That's the point of a visualization. Um, so what we did is we got the entire testimony and we are collapsing things based on what comes after I don't. So I just entered the I don't here at the, at the top. And this is what I'm looking for. And so obviously we have a branching uh, structure after that. I don't recall, I don't know, I don't think. So what doesn't he recall? And then I can start navigating this. I don't recall whether or not I made that decision that day. I don't recall whether or not I was present. So there's a lot of things he doesn't recall. Um, I don't know whether or not that puts everything behind us, quite frankly. That's right. So um, this is a very easy way for you to very quickly get a sense, get a gist of things. Let's see what he does. I do. I do agree, I do recall. He does recall certain things. It's a lot less than the things he doesn't recall. But it gives you a sense, oh, the other thing we can do is we can do a question mark and put that question mark at the end and then I get all the questions that were asked during the, during the testimony. So this uh, puts things into, con into, into uh, context, right? Probably, all of you have seen tag clouds. Tag clouds are the most popular way to visualize text. Um, the thing with tag clouds is that they decontextualize the words that they show, right? So one of the things we were trying to do when we created this word tree is to keep the words to also, we took a hint from the tag cloud if you, if you look at the way we're, we're doing font sizing here, right? We're, we're following the same thing as a tag cloud, the bigger, the the more frequently something was said, the bigger it is. But it sort of keeps it in context, which is important. Um, and again, this is something that people, so during the election last year, we started seeing tons of interest from people who wanted to make sense of the political speeches, of the candidates' promises, of the spin on what was being said. And so everybody, a lot of people would come to many eyes with tons of text and try to make sense of the text. And so sometimes creating these visualizations gives you an entry point into trying to think about um, you know, the discourse, the, the public discourse around you. Now, granted, this is again many eyes and people were using this for all sorts of things. So let me show you a different use of the same technique. So this is a word tree of personal ads that have the following phrase on them. I am married, okay? And these are all by males that say I am married in the personal ad. Um, so this person just collected a, per a bunch of personals, put it on many eyes and decided to visualize it. Um, so the people who say I am married, you know, I love how it, it's, I am married and, or I am married but, you know. So I am married and plan to st on staying that way. I am married and looking, um, or I am married but 
separated or looking. So it gives you a very different kind of data, of textual data to play with, right? Now, the last visualization technique I want to show you takes a little bit of explaining. So I'm going to uh, go back to slides. Um, sometimes what you want from a piece of text is to understand the connection between words, right? Um, so we just launched a visualization called, called the PhraseNet that allows you to create a network of connections between words. So <clears throat> you choose what your connector will be. So for instance, in this case, I chose and. So any word in a piece of text that connects two words, in any phrase that has the word and in the middle gets visualized. So for instance, if I were to run uh, Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice over this, this is a little piece of the novel and pride and impertinence come up. So that would be one data point in my network, okay? And it would look like this, pride and an edge to impertinence. The edge is the connection I chose, which is and, okay? So this gives us, let me show you what Pride and Prejudice actually looks like. So this is Pride and Prejudice, the entire novel, all the connections with and that we could find. So if I zoom in here, I can see that Pride <clears throat> is connected to a lot of different um, a lot of different nouns and adjectives. So you have pride connected to pleasure, to vanity, to conceit, to folly, to assurance. Um, let me go a little bit bigger so you get a better sense of how these are laid out. The interesting things, thing is that some of the things that are not so positive all get banded together. So you have ignorance and folly and conceit all sort of in the same cluster. Um, if you go back, you can see that you get here at the top, you get the social network of the novel. So you get Elizabeth and Jane um, and Catherine and the father. And, and um, Darcy isn't here because obviously he's very solitary in the, in the novel. So he doesn't come up with and very many times at all. So it doesn't show up here. Now, if I were to change the connection that I'm interested in and say, you know, instead of and, let me look at at. So I'm going to click on at, and then what do I get? I get the list of places, right, that the characters inhabit in the novel. So um, Pemberley and Netherfield and home and dinner table and so forth. Um, so using these different connections gives you very different ways of looking at this novel and the arrangement of them of these things in the visualization is also meaningful because things that are connected together concepts that are connected together will show up as a cluster right um, someone used this very technique to make sense of the town hall meeting that obama ran on the web so after everybody had uh, submitted questions and you know, the ADs were trying to go over the questions and, and to select a few for the president to answer, um, someone came to many eyes and uploaded all the, all the questions that had to do with education and created this, this visualization of it. So again, you see that things like schools and teachers and students all get clumped together. And then concepts and, and fields uh, such as math and music and art um, all get a different cluster as well. So this would be one way that you could try to make sense of a large collection of text. Um, let me show you a couple more examples. This is the phrase net of who beget whom. So beget is the connection here in the Bible. So you can see this beautiful sort of circular thing that gets a, a long tail, and this is a detail of what that looks like, that circular, all starting with Abraham. Um, still in the Bible, 
someone created these two phrase nets, one of the Old Testament at the top and one of the New Testament at the bottom. And this is, the connection here is of, um, son of God, children of Israel. And the cool thing here is you can see that in the Old Testament, everything sort of revolves around Israel, right? And in the New Testament, it all revolves around God. So giving you, again, a gist, a very specific way of looking at that collection. So many eyes, you know, there's so many visualization techniques, many more than I have time to talk about, but I'd encourage you to take a look at the site. Uh, it's www.many-eyes.com. And, and play with it. Um, you'll see a lot of different kinds of techniques being used, very different flavors of data being uploaded. And every once in a while, you see quite interesting discussions. A lot of times, people will create these visualizations and embed them on their own blogs, and the discussions will happen there instead of on the site. Um, one, of the, one of the nice things that's happening also in many eyes is that entire classrooms of students are coming to the site. Um, they get those as assignments. You know, go to many eyes, here's a data set, try to make sense of it, and tell me why you chose the visualizations that you chose. So that gives me a lot of hope uh, in that it makes uh, people sort of get their hands dirty with data, with trying to understand what does it mean to even uh, represent data graphically. What are the trade-offs? Because when you choose one visualization technique over another, you're telling one story over another, right? Um, so the more people have a chance to sort of get their hands dirty and, and use this kind of technology, the better off. Um, I want to finish with one more example of visualization that has been used very widely, and probably some of you in this room have used it. It's, so it's something I'm calling participatory visualization, when people are not just using these tools, they are using them in a very creative way. So this is something called Wordle. I'm sure some of you have, yeah, I'm getting nods from the audience. Um, and, and this is just, a, a, basically it's a tag cloud, but it's a very beautiful, aesthetically pleasing one. It was done by one of our colleagues at, um, at IBM. Um, and so the media has started. This is just a website anyone can go and use, and it's free, and you're free to do whatever you want with the Wordles, even to make money with Wordles if you want. Um, so the media got all over it and created, started creating these Wordles to make sense, like I said, again, last, last year, of the presidential campaign. So this is a visualization that the Boston Globe ran with two Wordles one from the McCain's blog, campaign blog at the top, and the other at the bottom from the Obama's um, campaign blog. And the interesting thing there is that Obama is the huge, is the biggest thing on both, right? Even on McCain's blog, which was quite um, telling. Um, Wired also ran a series of these wordles um, on the, the speeches that were delivered both at the Democratic and the Republic National Conventions last year. Um, and so each one of the, of the you know, I, I just chose six, but I think they ran something like 20 of these. Um, each one of the people who delivered uh, a major speech was visualized, right? The speech was visualized. And again, because you can tweak the way the, the wordle looks, you can, you can choose the colors, you can choose the font, you can <coughs> choose the layout. Um, if you notice this, isn't it interesting that everybody has a very stable layout except for John McCain, whose layout is completely diagonal and sort of, you know, does, does the word maverick come to mind? Or what is it that Wired Magazine was getting at? And this is, this is an interesting point also to, to think about with visualization, because people usually think that because you are visualizing data, that's the truth, and, and you, know, you are not editorializing anything. But here, they are clearly editorializing what it is that they are visualizing, and they are visualizing data. So in, you know, in, a, in a bigger discussion about what does it mean to visualize data, to visualize facts, you also have to keep in mind that there's always editorializing that goes on. 
Uh, the cool thing with Wordle is that it became this meme on the web. So people were creating Wordles like this person here to get boyfriend points. You know, I made one of these for my girlfriend with our names and stuff. We did when we were first dating. Um, she loved it. I got major bo boyfriend points. And then another person wrote back, yes, I got major boyfriend points too. So, you know, it goes to the heart. This person wrote in uh, to the to the creator of, of Wordle saying, you know, I found Wordle in a scrapbooking um, article and play with it. And then finally she says, I haven't felt so satisfied with my creative self in a while. Thank you very much. So people were just clicking a button to create these worlds. But by doing so, they were feeling extremely creative. Now there's something there, right? People didn't use to feel creative when they clicked one button to create, to, to do something. But there's something about the wordle that they feel is really representing, uh, representative of who they are. So people started creating wordle to do all sorts of things. These are birthday cards, beautiful birthday cards that someone created uh, by using wordle. These are wordle gifts you can buy that, you know, People are just <laughs> creating them and putting them up for sale. You have a skateboard, you have shoes, you have baby clothes, you have t-shirts, and so forth. So people are really sort of, again, the barrier that we used to have in terms of understanding this kind of technology as you know, academic or for experts only is starting to erode, which I think is really exciting because it means that we can actually get the rest of of society involved in, in trying to understand what does it mean to look at data, to look at numbers, to look at text, to make sense of these things collectively. Um, these are wedding vows, and I'm going to end here. Thank you.